One of the things that I really like to do is reverse engineer what other people are doing in a similar space or not even. I'm just trying to see what other people are doing and figuring out why it works. Because if you can take the overarching principles of why something works from someone else's business, then you can replicate it for someone else's. But I think what's just as important is finding someone who seems to be doing everything right, but they're getting no results. And there's this person right now that I'm pretty good friends with, Eric Sue. And right now his YouTube channel is not getting a lot of views, but they are clearly putting a ton of time, effort, production value, money into this thing to try and make it work. And what I'm thinking of right now is he's probably the best at what he's doing. He's doing interviews with people who are making millions and millions of dollars per month, like Alex Ramosi, Mark Moss, a lot of these other guys who are making a ton of money a ton of money, very, very famous in their fields, but he's getting no results. And I think a lot of the reason for that is because there's so much supply of interviews. All, all these people that are um, running businesses, they are thinking, how much demand is there for my product? How many people want to buy my product? But what a lot of them don't see is how much supply of other people are there doing this. When I was co-running a business in high school, there was no supply and unlimited demand. That is the best market in the world to be in. What I'm doing right now, there is unlimited demand. And for quality supply, there's very, very little demand. So this is a very good market because more and more people are running online uh, platforms and more and more people have great businesses that are trying to get into the organic reach space, just online social media. So a lot of them need help with that. So what I'm thinking of for this guy, Eric Sue, we talk quite a bit, get bouncing back ideas. Right now he's interviewing people, probably spending 10, 20 grand per interview. He has a, if you watch him, he has a ton of production. His podcast or his YouTube channel is leveling up with Eric Sue. He's probably the best interviewer I've ever seen, but he gets zero, zero results. And I think the reason for that is there's so many people doing what he's doing. There's unlimited supply of videos of very highly successful entrepreneurs being interviewed, interviewing other people. Every single person has a podcast now. So you can pick your favorite and then you continuously watch those same. It takes a big shift for you to stop listening to the podcast that you currently listen to and change to somebody else's, unless there's a unique spin on somebody else's. This is what James Gordon did with carpool karaoke. If you remember, he would get famous people, they'd go in a car, they'd sing together. And that was a unique spin. Or hot ones, they are eating hot chicken wings while being interviewed. It is adding a different dynamic or an additional variable to the actual video, which makes increase in demand, which that you want to tune in for that. Even if your favorite person, your online host is uh, the late night show or whoever the hell they are. I, I don't even know them because they're irrelevant now. So if you have to do some sort of unique spin, what I think I'm going to recommend to Eric Sue, I don't work with him, but we bounce ideas back and forth. He's one of the best marketers in the entire world. So I try and help him with his online stuff. I try and ask him questions about funneling stuff, email stuff, copywritten stuff, a lot of the business stuff. I ask him questions. I'll He'll ask me questions for some stuff. So I'll actually probably send him to this video. If you're watching this, Eric, hello, Merry Christmas. So if I was Eric, what I think I would do is I would try and find a unique spin that I could play because the biggest edge that he has is one, he knows what the hell he's talking about. He's running a massive business. He's one of the brightest people I've ever met in my entire life. And two, he's friends with all of these hyper successful business people already. For him, it's not this huge stretch to get somebody on his podcast. A lot of the times they're friends and they get dinner. They are hanging out on a casual basis. So then you just ask them to come on a podcast. So he has a lot more leverage because it's a lot easier for him to get this very high tier guest. So then I would take a unique spin on it. What I would probably do if I was Eric, at least this is a base layer. Uh, 30 seconds ago, I came up with this idea for him. So I would probably refine it a lot more or maybe even change it up. The main key thing is finding a unique spin on interviewing people because he's so damn good at it. Uh, but there's way too much supply of other people doing interviews. So what I would do if I was Eric is I would probably, at least right now, I would actually 
go around in a work day for these people that he's interviewing. It's usually these people that are making a ton of money online. So let's take Alex Hermosi, for example. If I was Eric, I'd say, hey, let me spend a few hours for, with you today and let me record your work day while I interview you. So in between the breaks, in between kind of the day-to-day -day business running stuff, then I will ask my questions. So you would basically be doing like a day in the life vlog of these people at the same time having the interviews, but it seems much more raw footage off guard. So you would still prep the exact same interview questions, but then you would package it in a way to where it's much more entertaining so more people are interested. And if somebody already has their favorite interviewer that they listen to, they would also want to watch this because it's a unique spin on the interview, which I think is necessary because we are living in a time where it's getting more and more hard to reach the attention of other people. Therefore, you have to have some sort of unique play. What am I doing? I'm doing uh, zero to 1000. I'm promising myself to do 1000 days. I'm not doing titles or thumbnails. I don't edit these, but that is still something quasi unique. It is not what I would recommend someone else to do because I'm just doing this to hopefully find good talent to hire in the future, as well as there's a bunch of other external reasons why I think this is important, but that is besides the point. All I'm doing is reverse engineering why someone like Eric Sue, who makes I think the best interviews that I've ever seen, period, hands down, why I think someone like that who gets no results should just take a different approach on it. Uh, and there, uh, there's so many podcasts dedicated to these one hour plus long, long interviews. So I think you just have to take a slightly different approach on it. You can't do the exact same thing that everyone else is doing because they already took up the market share. And why would their audience change from their market to yours? there would have to be some sort of unique spin because there is so much demand of people who want to listen to these interviewers who want to uh, learn how to make more money, want, want to learn from these people. I just think you have to structure it in a way that's more unique so you can take a lot of their market share and add actual more market share to the niche in general. And you only really get that by adding some sort of spin on it. I would have never cared about those late night talk shows uh, like Jimmy Kimball or whoever else those other guys are, if James Gordon didn't do the carpool karaoke. He brought my uh, attention to that when I never cared about that niche before, ever. And he kind of brought light upon it for someone like myself. So it added additional audience. And I think there's a, a, a very large audience of people who want to watch what a day-to-day -day of Alex Hermosi looks like and actually taking around while you're interviewing them, but you see a lot of the cut work of that grunt work, a lot of the things that he's actually doing, how he's managing people and all these external things. That's just one idea. I mean, I could think of probably 10 others like that would be a unique way to interview somebody. The main problem is so many people are now trying to interview other people when there's unlimited supply of interviews. So why would they rather watch yours opposed to somebody else's? It's usually you watch the person that you're already used to watching. It's very rare that you switch uh, from watching Fox to CNN. I, I, that's a, probably a pretty shitty analogy, but once somebody takes up a lot of that market share, it's very hard to take it and do redistribute it to someone else unless there's a unique angle on it. So that's probably the way that I would shift my thinking if I was Eric Sue, because his value is incredible. And I would recommend the 13 people who watch these to go and watch his podcast over the other people who are interviewing Al, um, Alex Hermosi or Layla Hermosi or these mega, mega, mega business people. He does the best job by far. He, he's putting a lot of value into it as well. And he's actually a guy that is doing it himself. So it makes a whole lot more sense. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, let's see. Did he end it? Damn, Rocky doesn't like it. <laughs>